Software development life cycles, or SDLCs, are covered by most major cybersecurity certifications, but they're also an area where many cybersecurity professionals don't have much experience. Unless you've spent time as a software developer or worked closely with developers in the past, you're probably not familiar with the different SDLC approaches that they use. Hi, I'm Mike Chappell. I'm a cybersecurity certification expert, and in this video, I'm going to help you understand what you need to know about software development life cycles as you prepare for your next cybersecurity certification exam. Now, many organizations find themselves developing software, whether it's for their own internal use or they're developing products for their customers. Security concerns should be taken into account at every phase of the software development process to ensure that the end result is safe, secure code that does meet the organization's business requirements. Every software project should begin with a solid set of requirements. Developers should work hand-in-hand -hand with their customers to outline the specific purpose of the software and details of the business goals that it will achieve. This process is known as requirements definition, and it's crucial to developing software that meets the organization's needs. After developing business requirements, developers then move on and translate those business requirements into a technical design. This is where technical experts lay out the roadmap for software development and determine the interfaces between components that will ensure everything fits together properly in the end. Software development is a sophisticated engineering process that's every bit as complex as a major construction project. Software engineers who set off on the development process without carefully defined requirements are acting like construction workers who begin building a home without a set of blueprints. The finished product is not likely to match the customer's vision, and there's a good chance that it's going to fall apart. Once they have a set of requirements in hand, developers can begin the process of creating software. Depending upon their organization's approach and the details of the specific project, they may choose one of several different software development methodologies. Now, before we get into those methodologies, I want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my other cybersecurity videos as they come out. All right, let's get back to exploring software development approaches. The classic approach to software development is a methodology known as the waterfall approach. This model, developed by Winston Royce back in the 1970s, approaches software development as a very linear process. It follows a fairly rigid series of steps. These begin with developing system requirements, move on to developing software requirements, then they produce a preliminary design from those requirements that is used as the basis for a detailed design. Once that detailed design is complete, developers begin the coding and debugging process where they create software. When they finish coding, the software is tested rigorously, and then if it passes those tests, it's moved into operations and maintenance mode. Modern approaches to waterfall development allow for movement back to an earlier step, but only one phase at a time. For example, if software fails the testing process, it moves back into coding and debugging before being submitted for additional testing. Now, this process is pretty rigid, and it doesn't allow for many changes to the software while development is in progress. For example, if a business unit identifies a desirable new feature halfway through the coding process, there really isn't any opportunity to modify the design. Because of this constraint, there aren't many modern software development shops that still embrace the waterfall model. In the 1980s, Barry Baim of TRW introduced the spiral model, a software development approach designed to mitigate some of the disadvantages associated with the waterfall model. Baim viewed software development as an iterative process that has four phases. In the first phase, developers determine objectives, alternatives, and constraints. They then move on to evaluating alternatives and identifying and resolving risks. From there, they develop and test the product, 
and then they begin the planning phase for future development work. Now, while this may sound similar to the waterfall model, the major difference is that developers move through these phases in an iterative fashion. They follow a spiral motion. They begin in the first phase and then move through each of the phases multiple times until they have a satisfactory finished product. More recently, developers around the world have come to embrace the agile approach to software development. This approach values rapidly moving to the creation of software and it's very popular. The creators of the Agile approach authored a document called the Agile Manifesto that discusses this approach in detail. The manifesto begins by stating four core values that guide the approach. Agile development values individuals and interactions over processes and tools. It values working software over comprehensive documentation. It values customer collaboration over contract negotiation and it values responding to change over following a plan. Now, to help implement these values, the Agile Manifesto defines 12 principles that support Agile software development. Let's walk through them together. In Agile development, our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through the early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Agile welcomes changing requirements even late in the development process. Agile processes harness change for the customer's competitive advantage. Agile approaches deliver working software frequently, from a couple of weeks to a couple of months, with a preference to shorter timeframes. In Agile development, business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. We should build projects around motivated individuals and then give those individuals the environment and support they need and trust them to get the job done. The most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face -face conversation. And Agile teams use working software as the primary measure of their progress. Agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. In Agile, we believe that continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances our agility. We also believe that simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done, is essential. The best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organizing teams, and at regular intervals, those teams reflect on how they can become more effective, then tune and adjust their behavior accordingly. Now, as you're probably sensing, Agile is more of a philosophy than a practical approach. But software developers have created more formal processes that implement these Agile concepts. These methodologies include Scrum, the Agile Unified Process, or AUP, the Dynamic Systems Development Model, and Extreme Programming. If the principles of the Agile Manifesto sound radically different from the waterfall and spiral approaches, that's because they are. Every organization needs to think through the different software development methodologies available to them and choose the approach that is most appropriate for their situation and needs. I hope that this video helped you understand software development life cycles better. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity content.